Okay, this is W5HRO, and I believe this is, what, part six, maybe? Uh, I had this uh, control panel all buttoned up, made it look nice and pretty. The red, new red power light was working awesome. And I went in there and I hooked it up to the transformers on the bottom of the transmitter and turned on the main power switch. Everything powers up fine. Turned on the, the plate switch here and hit the push to talk, and the fuses blow to the plate transformers. These two fuses, they're 20 amp fuses. And I was tempted to do the tin foilium thing to see if I force it, if it would come on, but I've det I pretty much determined what's going on. I cannot use these solid state relays any longer it, down at 110 volts because the sudden inrush, the sudden inrush current's going to be a lot higher. And I'm having that zero crossover problem. There's an issue when you try to, you know, engage primaries or transformers with solid state relays and you can damage them quickly. And I think that's kind of what's happened is that these two relays are now in pair, are now turning on both transformers at the same time and they, they don't like it. And the sudden inrush is so high that it's popping the fuses when it tries it. It's possible it hasn't fully damaged the relays yet. And I have a hunch these things were partially damaged in Tulsa back in the early 90s when I first put this thing together, even with the 240, because I was having a problem. I was seeing 120 volts on the, uh, the, the red line, because before years ago, this control power supply that turns the relays on, I was using the red, you know, the 12 volt line to turn the relays on and off, right? Well, it didn't work that way. I was seeing this high voltage on the on the red line for some strange reason. And I think it damaged them even back then. But when I converted the thing over to where I made this a floating ground, this was the control line. Because yesterday when I hooked it up, after it happened, it blew the fuses. I started checking this and I'm seeing 120, or they are the 120 volts AC on that line. It's weird. So I think what's happened is there's some leakage between one of these terminals and the ground terminal on this relay, the ground control terminal. And they were probably slightly damaged in Oklahoma, but by doing the floating ground thing, I was able to make it work again just barely, and it was working all those years. And now that I've tried to convert it for 110, this, uh, this problem has showed, it's show, it's shown its ugly, its ugly little head, if I can talk straight. So uh, anyway, I've ordered two mechanical relays, single pull, single throw, two big 40 amp ones, and I'm going to make one switch the black lead to one transformer and one switch the black lead to the other one. I'm going to make the white, the, you know, the neutral just common to everything. So I'm going to redo it with mechanical relays to solve the issue. I have no choice now, but what I've done is I've decided, I've decided to go in here and, uh, completely dismantle this transmitter, which is what I've done. I pulled the bottom transformer, you know, uh, base out. Luckily it rolls around on wheels, but I've gone through and I've cleaned it all up. And the issue is I'm looking at it, the way it was for a 240 volt operation, you had terminals two and three shorted together. And I'm wondering, cause now when you, basically what you do is you take the two windings in parallel. Where's the uh, data sheet for this? Here, spec sheet. See, that's what it looks like. And the issue I'm wondering, I want to make sure of, just to be, I want to just, this is like a double check. This is like just a sanity check. Because I want to make sure, too, that something, that this isn't what's happening. That, uh, you know, if they have like terminal three and four swapped, or terminal one and two swapped, I mean, they're labeled one, two, three, four on both sides correctly. But what if the windings all like three and four are reversed? What if they pull the one wire up? And the reason I'm saying this, and I'm going to check this, is because years ago I got a, a transformer from Peter Dahl, and his guy, whoever wound it, they mislabeled the terminals even. And it caused me a similar problem. So I just want to double check. I want to make sure the phasing, because these, you know, four needs to be connected to two for certain. This top winding needs to be connected to this one to make it work. See what you do? You jump her three and four and two and four to make it work, which is what I did. But I'm just, if one of these is, is swapped around, if it's out of phase, it'll mess the whole thing up and it, that could also blow the fuses. I'm pretty sure it's the zero, the zero crossover point of trying to turn on these transformers. But I just want to double check because that did happen to me with one of his transformers years ago. And it was like, hey, <laughs> I never did, did forget about that one. So I'm just going to double check. I thought I'd better clean this thing up. Not only that, a bunch of hardware screws and nuts I dropped in there. It's 
fell out, so I got all that crap out of there. So anyway, I'm going to put this thing back together probably tomorrow. I'm just going to jumper everything. I'm going to check the phasing on those just to be on the safe side. And I've gone ahead and I've drilled the holes and I mounted this new terminal strip so I can wire from there down to here so I can just take the cable from the front panel and connect it there instead of having to run the wires back to the transformers. That'll be nicer. So I've done that. And there's that old bias supply deck. I'm going to pull this transformer out and it's going to go on that rack with the T360, uh, T368 exciter. There's the modulator. There's a speech amp driver behind it. And I did get that... Uh, shelf in. I was going to mount the 368 exciter on. I was going to do that this week, but now I'm still working on the stupid supplies. The first thing I've got to do is get the, uh, the, the, plate, the plate supplies coming up. When I get that done, then I can finish this thing. There's the RF deck. And then here is the, uh, the filter deck, which goes right above the, uh, the plate transformers and the chokes. And oil, fill capa uh, oil fill caps, I think those are uh, 16 mics, if I'm not mistaken. But what I did years ago, this was like in the late 80s, I called Caddock the resistor places. These are non-inductive resistors, but they're 100 mega ohm, 1%, I believe. And what I did years ago was, is I used two 50 microamp meters with those resistors to, you know, this is like voltage now. So just over 20 is, you know, 20 would be 2000 volts. It's, it, there's this funny story about these meters. These are the ones like they used to use in the old Collins receivers. And these are the old hermetically sealed ones. These came from Peter Dole's shed in the back of his shop years ago. Because I used to occasionally go down there when I'd buy a transformer. I'd just drive down there to pick the stuff up every now and then when I had time. And one day I asked him, do you have any more meters? And he goes, let's go out there and look. We went out there and we looked and we found all these. That's where I got these uh, other ones down there for the RF deck too. So uh, those came from Peter's shed in the back of his shop down in El Paso. Yes, I did know Peter. I knew him very well. That's why I had so many of his damn transformers. He used to custom wind me stuff like this all the time. But I should get this thing assembled. I'm going to slide this back in here tomorrow. And it's probably going to be about a week before I get my relays and stuff. So I'm just waiting on parts again. So I've got stuff to keep me busy. And as soon as I get this thing slid back in here and get the new relays in and get this thing where I can actually, you know, hit the push to talk and turn those plate transformers on, you know, I, I'm not doing anything else until I get that done first. So I'm going to finish this up. And as soon as I get that done, then I'll make another video as I start putting together all the uh, other pieces like uh, like this guy. Boy, that's going to be fun. So that's it for now. This is W5HRM.